Dragon Ball Fighters 2 is almost inevitable at this point, especially after the recent 8 million copies sold of Dragon Ball Fighters 1. The success of the game warrants a sequel for sure. But Dragon Ball Fighters 2 has a devastating problem it's going to have to overcome. So what is this inevitable issue that Dragon Ball Fighters is going to have to overcome? Well, that's character roster. Now, the reason I say that is because, as we know, typically when a game is in development, they try a lot of different things, a lot of which ends up getting cut from the final game. So they tried transformations and failed. They couldn't get it to work. And as a result, they ended up giving us characters locked into a specific form, or they gave us different transformations as DLC characters, like UI Goku, for example. And this is where the problem comes into play, because if they successfully implement transformations into Dragon Ball Fighters 2, then half the roster easily disappears, and a lot of their DLC potential goes along with it, as they won't be able to sell us a base Goku as he'd presumably start in base form. In this scenario where transformations are a functional part of the game, Dragon Ball Fighters still has a lot of other characters they can begin to implement into the DLC roster. People like Deborah, Super Boo, so on and so forth. But you are still eliminating some people's favorite characters. People who didn't necessarily like playing base Goku, but really enjoyed UI Goku, no longer really get that option. Or people who enjoyed Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, but didn't like Super Saiyan Vegeta, are forced to play Super Saiyan Vegeta before they can actually access the character they wanted. Personally, I don't think transformations really need to be in this kind of game anymore. The novelty sounds fun, it sounds like a good time, but the way Dragon Ball Fighters is structured, I don't think it's a necessity. In fact, I think not having transformations ended up working out really well for the game, especially as a lot of the roster can't actually transform. So that mechanic could have left a lot of characters dead in the wind without being able to really bridge that power gap. So I like the fact that characters don't transform, but how does that become an issue for Dragon Ball Fighters 2? You see, if characters aren't able to transform in Dragon Ball Fighters 2, the question becomes, is Dragon Ball Fighters 2 gonna come with the full roster, DLCs included, from Dragon Ball Fighters 1, similar to how Xenoverse 2 did? This would be the best case scenario, giving us all of the accessible characters from the previous game right off the bat in the sequel. The only issue there is that now a lot of the hyped characters like UI Goku aren't gonna generate DLC sales. The big problem is if they don't give us the full previous game's roster, then they're going to have to end up reselling us DLC. And that just doesn't sit well. These DLCs aren't cheap and for a lot of the demographic, people don't want to shell out a hundred and something dollars in order to buy a lot of the same characters they already bought for the previous game. Having to buy UI Goku all over again or having to buy Z Bro all over again is a little bit frustrating and something I really hope they don't do. Now once again, seeing as Xenoverse 2 already came with Beerus and Whis if my memory serves me correctly, they could and probably would go ahead and give us the roster from the previous game in the sequel. But dudes, let me know in the comments down below, how do you think Bandai Namco can go ahead and generate hype around new DLC characters if we already have all of the previous game's roster in the sequel? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and be sure to give the video a massive like and subscribe if you're new here for daily Dragon Ball Fighters content and check out these videos next. Thank you guys for watching.